PES 2020 falls well short of maintaining the momentum from last year's entry from inconsistent latent controls to a soulless, archaic single player offering that will leave football fans desperate for an alternative or desperately googling how to play Madden. This review will exclusively focus on the offline portion of the game because at the time of writing the online features were unavailable. And frankly, I've spent enough money on fake football players for several lifetimes. The problem with developing a new football game is that outside of doing something like surreptitiously adding a few players to each team or making every goal count for a random amount, every single virtual depiction of the beautiful game is beholden to the same rules. In practice, as with all sports games, it then becomes the intangibles of the game that differentiate them from year to year. Things like the weight of passing, the speed of players, and even things like the responsiveness of menus make up the fine margins between whether a sports game will be remembered fondly by the community or if its name will become synonymous with an off year. In the case of Pro Evolution Soccer, the once dominant genre-defining series faced several of these off years in a row, allowing the FIFA series to overtake it, much like a young prospect takes the starting position in a team of a long-standing club servant. Of course, that analogy works better if the new prospect had been selling the manager virtual packs of ephemeral playing cards at exorbitant rates. However, with the general sentiment of the FIFA community being that of a hostage situation during a week, there's never been a better time for Pez to take back the crown. Pez 2019 made some good strides with gameplay that provided a tangibly different experience to FIFA's. Despite my disappointment in how limited it felt in comparison to FIFA's suite of features, we were reassured that this was the first year in a rebuilding phase for Pez. Well, they must have been denied planning permission because despite a fresh new name, eFootball Pez 2020 feels like a sluggish, bare bones step back from the strides they made last year. If a football game controls badly, it could have the nicest menus and every license since the beginning of time, it's still not worth playing. PES 2020 controls badly. Offline game modes feel like they're being played over dial-up and that your opponent is located somewhere near Saturn. Players take three working days before moving in the desired direction and good luck if you'd like to implement a change of pace to trick a defender. In the time that it takes for that to be executed, the season will be finished. A lot of football games have been guilty of making every single player feel great, with very little to set players apart outside of a handful of top-end stars like Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. PES 2020 seems to have the opposite problem, where every player feels like a janitor that's been drafted into your lunchtime game of sevens. They feel so unbelievably heavy. Something PES 2020 has taken into consideration is the position of your player's body when you strike the ball. For example, a shot that's taken hastily from a bad angle will jettison its way into the car park, whereas theoretically, an awareness of position and a mastery of clinical timing should mean that you score every time. However, in practice, due to input delay from when you actually kindly suggest your player takes a shot and them actually executing it, the side netting takes an absolute battering. The Master League for a long time was the feather in the cap of those still clinging to the Pez side of the argument when things started to turn in EA's favour. A revamped Master League had been discussed last year, but it has failed to materialise. Outside of the opportunity to manage your team as the mute ghost of Johan Cruyff, functionally, a lot of Master League feels identical to last year's effort. And while the world's most popular spreadsheet software, Football Manager's interface, would be far too much for a controller, a middle ground that's a bit more sophisticated than what we get on consoles now is sorely needed. While Master League's interface is very nice, and they clearly spent a lot of time animating you and your managerial team's mime performance of the pointing of the laptop, it's very bare bones. The game also features a be a legend mode in which you can take control of a single real life player, or if you'd like to create some absolute monstrosity you're welcome to do that too. And what you get out of this mode might hang on how funny you think it is to repeatedly ask the board for the shirt number 420, it seems competent. PES 2020's single player offerings are disappointing. Even if its Master League mode was anything like its former glory, or even slightly improved on the dire state of career modes in football games, I do not enjoy the way the game controls. Players will be tenuously responsive at best, and at worst they seem actively afraid of the ball. The competition is in such a state where a really good PES could establish itself as the football game for people that love football, but this is a poor attempt that seems to focus on the wrong thing. Thanks for watching this review of eFootball Pro Evolution Soccer 2020 or PES 2020 if you don't have all the time in the world. What do you think? Are you going to give it a try or are you going to wait out till FIFA? Let me know in the comments below. Bear in mind once again that this review reflects the single player portion of PES 2020 as the online version was not available at the time of publishing. Maybe if you're a diehard My Club fan you might get something out of that, but it's the same core gameplay across the two modes so just bear that in mind. Remember to like the video and remember to subscribe to BBC The Social Gaming. Until next time, I'm Jordan Midler. See you later.